Hello everyone. In my previous lecture, I introduced what is applied linguistics and we had a detailed discussion on the birth and emergence of applied linguistics. In this lecture, we will discuss contrastive analysis. So, let's learn what is contrastive analysis. Contrastive analysis. Contrastive analysis, abbreviated with CA, is an approach to the study of SLA. SLA stands for Second Language Acquisition. So, what is contrastive analysis? Contrastive analysis is one of the approach to the study of second language acquisition. So, what does it do? A contrastive analysis involves predicting and explaining learner problems, the problem of second language learner based on a comparison of L1 and L2. So, a contrastive analysis compares L1 with L2 to determine similarities and differences and determine what are similarity and differences between L1 and L2. Right? So, L1, that is the language that you have already acquired. That is your first language. And L2 is the target language you want to acquire. So, what are the similarity between L1 and L2? Right? So, this comparison is made. Right? So, it was heavily influenced by theories which were dominant in linguistics and psychology within the USA through the 1940s and 1950s, structuralism and behaviorism. So, contrastive analysis then is an approach to the study of second language acquisition and it is involved with the problem faced by L2 learner when they are acquiring L2 and these problems are determined by comparing L1 with L2, right? Robert Ledu is the person who introduced and formulated his contrastive analysis. He says, the students who come into contact with the foreign languages will find some features of it very easy while others extremely difficult. For example, my L1 is Urdu and I am the native speaker of Urdu and if I want to learn Hindi, which will be a foreign language for me. So, some of the features of Hindi language I'll find very easy while other features for me will be very difficult. Now, he says that elements that are similar to his native language will be simple for him. Now, those elements which are similar in my L1 Urdu and my L2 Hindi will be easy for me, right? Let me repeat it for you, that I speak Urdu, okay, that is L1 for me and I want to learn a foreign language, that is Hindi. So, some of the features which are similar in my L1 and L2 will be easy for me to understand or to learn or to get and those features uh, which are different will be difficult. Now, those features, there will be certain features in L1 and L2, in Urdu and Hindi, which we would be uh, different from each other. So, those different elements would be difficult for me to learn. That is okay, that his opinion, right? That when uh, a person, right, uh, who wants to or who is in contact with the foreign language. So, some of the features of the foreign language he or she will discover easy and some of the features of the foreign language that he or she is, he or she is uh, in need to learn will be difficult. So, those features which are similar, okay, between L1 and L2 will be easy to learn and those features which are different between L1 and L2 would be difficult to learn, right? That is okay then his contrastive analysis. Major claim of contrastive analyst. All L2 errors can be predicated by identifying the differences between the learner's native language and the target language. So, you don't need to focus on similarity. You need to focus on differences between native language and 
target language right the role of contrastive analysis the role of contrastive analysis was to analyze languages to find differences not similarities mainly on structural level how a language is structured why because as structuralism was a dominating trend in languages at the time in 1940s and 50s structuralism was a dominant trend so based on structuralism these contrastive analysts they analyze languages to find out differences and mainly on structural level how languages are structured how sentences are structured how phrases are structured how words are structured and consequently point out the potential area of difficulty for l2 learner for example uh, they wanted to discover to find out what are the differences in the structure level of l2 and l1 for example i speak l1 so what is the structure level of l1 and i want to acquire or i want to learn l2 so what is the structure level of l2 so those area which are different between l1 and l2 so they try on those areas right so a list of those areas was provided to course book okay for example uh, chinese language is a foreign language for me and french language is a foreign language for me and hindi language is a foreign language for me and arabic language is a foreign language for me and my l1 is urdu so a course book would be prepared and in that course book the the structure level of l1 and l2 which were different were given okay in those books and then a drill would be provided to the students to learn the differences between the structure of l1 and l2 so to course book developers and teachers who were supposed to prevent the potential errors in learners language by applying appropriate language drills so these students would be given like uh, uh, some kind of language drill and in that language drill they were supposed to provide the differences between l1 and l2 at structure level how for example a sentence is structured in l1 and how a structure a sentence is structured in l2 so what are the problems what are the differences those differences were pointed out and they were given in the books and then those course books were given to the teachers and then the teachers were supposed to teach them to students through a language drill in the classroom this was like uh, the procedure of contrastive analysis and contrastive analyst now the goal of contrastive analysis as that of still earlier theories of l2 learning was primarily pedagogical in nature to increase efficiency and l2 teaching and testing so the goal and aim of contrastive analysis was pedagogical one right and they wanted to increase the efficiency in l2 teaching and testing right now we will discuss contrastive analysis hypothesis what are the tenets of contrastive analysis contrastive analysis is a way of comparing languages in order to determine potential errors for the ultimate purpose of isolating what needs to be learned and what does not need to be learned in a second language learning situation right so they would compare l1 with l2 and the purpose is what that what needs to be learned and what needs not to be learned so if there are they find some similarities so they are going to skip similarities they are going to avoid similarities because similarities are not going to teach to the students they are going to focus on differences because they are need to be learned by l2 learners as lado detail one does a structure by structure comparison of the sound system morphological system syntactic system 
and even the cultural system of two languages for the purpose of discovering similarities and differences. So L1 is compared with L2 structure by structure in order to find out what are the similarities and differences between L1 and L2. So the ultimate goal is to predict areas that will be either easy or difficult for learners. So L1 and L2 are compared in order to find out similarities and differences. In order to predict areas that will be either easy or difficult for L2 learners, right? So here we have six basic pedagogical assumptions of the contrastive analysis hypothesis. So the first hypothesis is learning a new language involves establishing a new set of language habits. If you want to learn a new language, so you have to establish a new set of language habits. The second hypothesis is the major source of error in the productions and receptions of a second language is the native language. So if you are going to make errors in L2 or in a foreign language, that is because of native language. Because you have already acquired your L1 and you already speak a language. So because of the first language, you are making errors in acquiring a second language. So this is the second hypothesis. The third one is that one can account for errors by considering the differences between L1 and L2. So you can account errors, right, by considering the differences between L1 and L2, right? It means when you are learning L2 and you are making errors, that is because there are differences between L1 and L2. The fourth hypothesis is the greater the differences, the more error will occur. If there are more differences between L1 and L2, so there will be more errors. And if there are less differences between L1 and L2, so there will be less error because they are making a comparison of the two structures. So if the two structures are more different, there will be more errors. And if the two structures of L1 and L2 uh, they are less different, so there will be less errors. And the fifth hypothesis is what one has to do in learning an L2 is learning the differences. Now, if you want to learn L2, you have to learn the differences, the differences between L1 and L2. Similarities can safely be ignored as no new learning must occur. So when you are learning L2, actually you are learning differences between L2 and L1. And you have to learn those differences which are different from your native language, right? While uh, similarities are safely ignored because there is no new learning. And the sixth hypothesis says, difficulty and ease in learning are determined respectively by differences and similarities between the two languages. How one language is easy or difficult is dependable upon that how many differences and similarities are there between L1 and L2. So the first hypothesis says that you have to develop new set of language habits. Second says that if you are making errors in your L2, so that is because of your L1 or native language. The third says that there are differences between L1 and L2. And the fourth says that if there are more differences, there will be more errors, less differences, less error. While the fifth says that you have to learn differences while avoid uh, similarities. While the sixth says that how a language is easy or difficult or how a learning is easy or difficult depend that how many differences and similarities are there. So these are the six hypotheses of contrastive analysis. Structuralist linguist. Following notion in structuralist linguist, because contrastive analysts were the proponent of structuralist linguist. 
Structuralist linguists in 1940s and 50s focused on the structure of language. Similarly, their twin contrastive analysts, they were comparing L1 with L2, so they also focus on the structures of the two languages. So, contrastive analysts were the proponent and they were the supporter of structuralist linguists. So, the focus of contrastive analysis is on the surface form of both L1 and L2 system. So, what are the surface form? They are structure. They were focusing on the structure of L1 and L2 and on describing and comparing the languages one, one level at a time generally contrasting the phonology of L1 and L2. So, first they compare the phonology of L1 and L2, structure system. First, and then the morphology, then syntax and uh, uh, the lexicon receiving relatively little attention and discourse little attention. So, the more attention was given to phonology and morphology and then little attention was given to lexicon and discourse. So, both a bottom-up priority for analysis generally are from smaller to larger unit, from phonology, then morphology, and then syntax, and then discourse. But little attention was given to discourse structure. It is also expressed as a priority for language learning of structure before meaning. So, they thought that before L2 learner uh, know or learn the meaning of a language. So, before the meaning structures are important. So, importance was given to structure rather than meaning. So, meanings are secondary important and structures are primary important. So, that's why they ignore meaning and the focus was given to structure. So, Charles Fry's who was a leading figure in applying structural language to L2 teaching makes this priority very clear. In learning a new language, the chief problem is not at first date of learning vocabulary item. So, vocabulary item, learning vocabulary items are not important if you are learning L2. So, then what are important? Important are the structure. What is the phonological structure of L1 and L2 and what is the uh, like morphological structure of L1 and L2. So, that is comparison. So, they thought that uh, learning the meaning of vocabulary is not important. What is important? That is structure. So, the chief problem is not at first the learning vocabulary item. It is first the mastery of the sound system, that is phon ph phonology system. It is second the mastery of the feature of arrangement that constitute the structure of language. So, then the arrangement of uh, uh, the words into proper order, it comes in secondary. So, the meanings and uh, these larger structures are given importance later on. You can see here that it is first the mastery of the sound system, that is phonological system, okay, the structure of phonology. It is second the mastery of the features of arrangements that constitute the structures of a language right said by fries 1945